you for joining us for this month's Science Olympiad STEM session. It's Forensics Month and we're excited for our interview with Mark Torrey, a forensic DNA analyst at the U.S. Army Crime Investigation Lab. Mark was one of the first people to fill out our Science Olympiad alumni survey when we started collecting them. We were hoping to discover a concrete link between participating in our program and one day becoming a scientist. To date, more than four out of five respondents have told us that Science Olympiad led them to a STEM pathway. That's impressive. In his survey, Mark told us that Science Olympiad allowed him to see a broad range of scientific fields, but gave him the choice to hone in on what he truly liked. He also said that the lifelong friendships he developed on the team were really, really important, and we hear that a lot. Forensic science is the use of scientific methods to investigate crimes or examine evidence that might be presented in a court of law. It includes a variety of disciplines from fingerprint and DNA analysis to anthropology and wildlife forensics. We've seen incredible advances in the field recently, like developing new DNA markers to increase statistical certainty and allow investigators to identify suspects that could slip through the cracks and also potentially exonerate the innocent. But it's not just crime that forensic scientists work on. They can help solve extremely old mysteries. Back in 2012, the remains of a 527 year old skeleton were discovered under a parking lot in Leicester, England. The folks who dug him up had a sneaking suspicion that they were the remains of King Richard III. Yes, that King Richard III, one of Shakespeare's favorite hunchback villains. Does my kingdom for a horse ring any bells? Anyway, in real life, Richard was only king for two years when he was killed at the Battle of Bosworth and then buried in Leicester. But for more than 500 years, nobody really knew where he was because the friary where he was buried had been torn down. Forensic scientists used multiple pieces of evidence to identify him. The skeleton had scoliosis or curvature of the spine, so he wasn't a hunchback, but he did have one shoulder higher than the other. They also found physical evidence of battle wounds and were able to determine that the skeleton was the right age to be Richard. Additionally, and this is really cool, they found living relatives of Richard and were able to match the DNA to his female line through his older sister, Anne. It's an incredible story and it really shows how forensic science can help shape our understanding of history as well as current events. I'm so excited for you to hear what Mark has to say about his work in various crime labs and how he's tied his Science Olympiad experience into his investigations today. What do you do and what does that mean? I'm a forensic DNA analyst. I work for the U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Laboratory. And what that means is evidence is submitted to our laboratory from submitting agencies through all four or five uh, armed forces. Those are the Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, Marines, and actually now the Space Force. Um, evidence is submitted to our laboratory and I examine that evidence for the presence of DNA. And if I find DNA and if it matches uh, the individuals involved in the alleged uh, incident, I then go testify to those findings in the court of law in the military. So kind of a little bit of, uh, of uh, the movie with Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson, A Few Good Men, not quite as intense, but it's very similar uh, inside the court. And how old were you when you joined Science Olympiad? Uh, I was in seventh grade. I went to a traditional junior high, seventh through ninth. And the first opportunity to join Science Olympiad back in my hometown of Grand Haven, Michigan was in, in seventh grade. So that's when I started and I was in it all through junior high and all the way through high school. Who introduced you to Science Olympiad? I'm not really sure. I was trying to remember. Uh, I think it was just an announcement over the airwaves one morning um, announcing that Science Olympiad was an opportunity and probably talked to my science teacher at the time and she said that would be a good idea for me to try it. So I went out for it and was in it ever since. Mark, which events did you like best? In junior high, we had one. Of course, I go way back. So um, don't know if any of these events still exist, but uh, my favorites were weather or not and a pentathlon. That's great. Any significant memories from your time in Science Olympiad? 
you know, it was a great time. Um, <clears throat> really introduced me to very many different aspects of science um, and possibilities for a career. Uh, we got to go to a lot of really cool tournaments. Um, so I would say probably the traveling to the tournaments. One year we bus all the way from Grand Haven, Michigan to Auburn, Alabama. And we had some crazy adventures on that bus, but I would say the traveling to the, to the tournaments was probably some of the best times we had. And where did you go to college or graduate school and what did you study? I went to Michigan State University. I uh, got a bachelor's of science in zoology. And then I went um, and went to master, went to graduate school at, West, at Marshall University in West Virginia. And that's where I obtained a master's of science in forensic science. As a DNA analyst, what does a typical day look like for you? For me, uh, as a forensic scientist, I don't just do lab work all the time. Uh, it's a pretty large component of my day, but I also have administrative work that I have to do, such as uh, interpreting data and uh, writing the report that eventually gets submitted to the agency that submits the evidence. Um, but when I'm going into the lab, uh, first thing I have to do is I have to put on my personal protective equipment um, and then pull out my evidence from secure location and then examine that evidence for whatever it is in that case that I'm looking for, be it a body fluid like blood or semen or um, just regular uh, touch DNA, which is DNA that doesn't come from body fluid. And when I find a presence of either body fluid or if I sample something for DNA, my next step is to go through the DNA process to pull that DNA out of that sample and then run it through, a, through an instrument called the genetic analyzer. Uh, it's a big fancy piece of equipment that gives me raw data and I run it through some software programs that gives me the resultant data from that evidence. And like I said, again, I have to write a report on those findings and then that report then goes on to uh, submitting agency. And then if that case happens to go to court, uh, because I'm in the military or I work for the military at the lab, um, those court trials happen where the incident occurred. So that could be um, Fort Hood, Texas. It could be Fort Bragg, North Carolina, or it could be uh, Yakuska Air Force Base in or naval base, excuse me, in Japan, or somewhere in Korea or England or Italy. So we go all over the world to testify, and that is part of our job. Do you collaborate with other STEM professionals? How and who? Everyone that's a scientist in the lab is a STEM professional. And we do work together while we do have our own cases, and we work independently of each other. Uh, we do have some collaboration if we are working a case that touches multiple disciplines within the lab. So I'm a DNA analyst, but we also have uh, latent print analysts. We have firearms analysts. We have computer uh, digital forensic analysts, um, drug chemists, drug chemists. So some of those cases will touch multiple disciplines and we work together to determine best path for the evidence, who should, who should work it first, what should be done with a particular item if there's some questions about that. Uh, we all work together to try and, and do what's best for the evidence so that we can help solve that case as best we can. When you started working as a scientist, what surprised you most about your work? Uh, probably the actual amount of lab work that I was gonna do as a forensic scientist. I know some scientists, uh, they end up doing a little bit of work and then a lot of paperwork or a lot of something around of not in the lab. But we, as me as a forensic scientist, I get to do a lot of lab work, which is what I prefer to do. I, I enjoy working in the lab. I enjoy the challenges that that, uh, that, that poses and find that fun to, to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. What's the most exciting thing you've learned in the last year? That's a tough one uh, <laughs> because every day is something new. Um, I would say probably that whenever I think I've seen it and heard it all, uh, something new comes in that totally changes all that perspective. And uh, every case is different. Every case has different uh, ways to handle it. Every case has something different that is involved. And, uh, and the resolution is always somewhat different. 
What did you learn in Science Olympiad that still helps you today? If I remember correctly, way back when, um, we did have a, uh, an event called Forensic Crime Busters. I wasn't in that event specifically, I was an alternate for one year, um, but I definitely learned some of, the, some of the things that we were introduced to way back when, um, I still see and can draw from doing my work today. As well as, I would say, the teamwork aspect, learning to take a problem and collaborate with other individuals to come up with a solution for that problem. We, I still have to do that. I still have to draw on other people to, to, um, to figure out how are we best gonna handle this particular piece of evidence. And it's a lot of collaboration. So you learn that from science living. You know, some, some events are singular, but a lot of the events uh, require at least one to even, but at Tathlon we had three, it was a team of four. So I had to work with three other people to solve that problem. And, and a lot of that comes into effect today. What do you like to do in your free time? I've got two kids, so they take up a lot of free time. Um, one's uh, in eighth grade and the other one's in third grade. Uh, I've been an assistant coach for my young son uh, for many years. Uh, this year, we finally decided to hand off to someone. So now I get to be a spectator, but um, pretty much just watching my kids do the things that they like to do. And then we like to, we like to travel. We like to go and, and see new places. Uh, I do like to camp and get out in the outdoors. Uh, so I do that as much as I can, which is not a whole lot right now, but uh, my time will free up sooner or later. And I'll get to enjoy more of that, but whatever I, can, whatever I can do to do something different. What advice do you have for students interested in pursuing a future in science? Whatever you're passionate about, whatever you're interested in, give it a shot. Uh, worst thing that can happen is you decide that's not for me, move on in a different direction, but never sell yourself short. Always go for whatever you're trying to achieve. And I mean, a lot of it is a lot of work, but it all pays off in the end. So just go for what you want and achieve as best you can. What a great interview. Thanks to Mark for identifying ways that you too can follow your interests to a rewarding STEM career. We hope this interview motivates you to explore the topics of crime busters and forensics on your own and to try some of the activities in the free lesson plans and guides we've posted on the MySO page. Thanks for tuning in.